Hello Minecraft fans and redstone experts. Today I'm going to share with you a sort of novelty combination lock. There's six buttons in all, and I've color-coded them nicely. As you can see, no one can open the door simply by powering with redstone. As you might expect, you're going to have to put in the right combination, and then step on this pressure plate. But there's a lot more to it than you think. First of all, there's this hallway. If you were trying to enter the room we were just in, you'd have to go against the current. And on top of that, the ground is soul sand with ice beneath it, which makes movement extremely slow. If you jump to go faster, you'll make splashing noises. So the idea here is to make it impossible for any unwanted person to see you enter the combination. I know this has nothing to do with redstone, but we haven't gotten to the fun part yet. You see, even if you knew the combination to the door, there's something special you have to do first, or it still won't open. And if you don't know the combination, uh, pushing a wrong button means you have to climb all the way up like we're doing now just to do it again. Uh, seeing how time-consuming this is, this means the combination will be virtually impossible to guess because people still trying to break in will spend all their time going up and down the stupid ladder and going through that water. And that is assuming that the combination's long enough, anyway. So, uh, now that we're up top, uh, here's what you have to do. You have to make a wish. Well, not really, but what you really have to do is throw a random item in here. I just got some gold. Now, it'll be swept away never to be seen again unless you actually get inside the base and retrieve it. Uh, this item plays an integral role in the circuitry I've set up. And like I said, each time you press a wrong button, you have to drop another item in there. While we're on this descent, I think I'll mention that the reason it's so long is because I went crazy and made it uh, 17 digits long. And I know that's excessive. Uh, just remember, uh, there's six buttons. And that means it's six to the 17th power of possible combinations you'd have to try. And that's nearly 17 trillion at this point. Uh, if you want to do something a bit more reasonable, you could probably set up for 8 digits, which would give you about uh, 1.6 million combinations. Uh, that would be more than enough to keep anyone out but uh, with this kind of setup. Alright, now I randomly made up a combination while making the system. It doesn't have to be secret to you guys or anything, so I'll just enter it. Alright, so yellow, and green, Blue, and red, and purple, and orange, and blue, and purple, and yellow, orange, green, yellow, red, orange, red, blue. God damn, that was a long time. Okay, let's see if this works. We're in. Alright. So, I just have a little base here. There's not much in it, because it's just, you know, a showcase, really. Not, you know, it's not important. We can raid it, though. Not really. Uh, but, I might as well show you some convenience things that I put in here. Um, this button here will temporarily open the door so you can get out. Um, it'll work regardless of whether or not the system was um, re recently opened. And this lever here will keep it permanently propped open, and, I don't know, in case you want to do whatever. I'll be using that a lot. Now, um, let's just look at the circuitry now. I know this first part is a really ugly mess. Um, that's just the consequences of me wanting to have the buttons really nice and close together, so, you know, they have all these stupid repeaters everywhere. Um, this one goes this way, and the green one goes along this line to the green. Yellow is yellow, the orange is orange. Yes, as you can see, I've color-coded it, so you can see which one goes to which. So the purple line has to come up here, use that to get over this torch. And there, finally the red one's at this end. But why don't we just um, skip the intermediary, inter intermediary bits and go straight to the crux of the design. Now this pressure plate right here is the final goal. 
The item that you drop in the well has to make its way all the way down to this plate so that it'll produce power. Uh, this power will turn off a redstone torch, which is connected to an ore gate. Now the ore gate is inverted and set to power a torch under the under the iron door. Now, let me get that in there. So, damn it. So basically, both inputs to the OR gate have to be off in order for uh, the torch under the door to shut off. And the other, the other input, as you might guess, is this pressure plate right here. Yeah, but that's only half of it. I'm sure you must be wondering uh, what kind of newish idea crept into my head to make a combination door lock that required dropping items and, and pistons. Well, the premise is pretty simple. The water in the well transfers your item to a specific point, kind of like uh, how it is above this block right here. If I could get it on there. Um, now, as you can see, we want the gold to fall straight down so it would hit that uh, that switch right there. The problem is the, the glass block is on the way, and it, it's connected to this piston which is extended. Uh, if the piston would retract, it's a sticky piston, so it would pull the block under and it would fall down, but of course it's receiving power. Yeah, but what's this other piston do? If you notice, it's right next to uh, where the gold is supposed to rest, and it's ready to extend. So if this piston were to receive power, it would push the gold right off, and that would just make it impossible for it to ever be on this switch. Um, here, I'll give you an example here. So, this first this first one at the bottom, well technically it's the last one, the power is coming through uh, these two repeaters, which is coming through that block, and that block is being powered by this circuit here, which as I've already said, connects with that purple button on the other side of that wall. Now I'll just demonstrate it, prop the door open, and I'll push the purple button. And we have a success. Now, if you didn't press the right button, though, um, it'll be knocked off. I'll show you that. You see, all these other blocks are p being powered, too. Well, yeah, they're being powered at the moment because the buttons are on. And this power is charging up, and it's keeping these torches off. And these torches, if they were turned on, would put power to these. And it would go through any of these, any one of these um, repeaters. It's This whole thing's basically an OR gate, and, you know, it'll light up the circuit here and make the piston go. So I'll just demonstrate that now for you. I'll just, I think I'll push the red one. As you, as you can see, it's down on the ground in this little black square, never to touch the panel again. Now I'll just uh, fly up here and show you that basically Basically, everything's about the same and nearly identical. At the very top here, you'll see the water source where the item uh, is fed into to rest on top of this block. So basically, it's all the same thing. If you were to, um, if you were to push the right button, your item would fall down, uh, fall straight down, and land on this, this block. Now, if you press the wrong button at any time, it'll always be resting on one of these glass blocks until it gets to the very end. So if you press the wrong button, these, uh, the piston uh, will come out, and it'll push it all the way down. Um, and, it'll basically, and your item to an intruder would basically just be discarded forever. And unless maybe someone could stand there and collect them, that would be funny. But yeah, basically, once you hit the wrong button, you're through, and you'd have to reset it, of course. The thing is, you don't know if you hit the wrong button if you don't know the password. So that just makes things more frustrating. 
Now I'll just put one of these things here for the moment and I'll show you how changing the combination is pretty simple. Um, basically all you have to do is remove this and you just put it like the other ones with the torch in the block. And then um, then you just gotta pick one, let's say green. And then you put the repeater and the wire. And that's it. Well, there's one sort of small thing. Whenever you put the torch down, you saw it, you heard it, the piston go right, and the torch went on and off really fast. It kind of tweaked this thing out. Um, but you can really fix that kind of easily. Um, all you got to do is just hit the wrong button for that one, or if you fix a lot of things, in any case, you just hit two buttons, and it'll work like a charm, and it should be back exactly how it was before. Um, anyway, I'll just demonstrate this to you now. So now I've changed it to, what did I do, green? So green will be the correct button now. Yep, it's down there. And the old correct button, which was a uh, purple, that'll be the one that that'll be one of them that knocks it off. There you go, see. Now of course if you want to change the other ones, you can just climb up the ladder. Um, the one down there at the very bottom corresponds to the to the very last digit. The one next is the second to last digit. And you can just keep you can just keep going up and changing as you please and so on until you've done it all. Um, I think you probably understand this schematic. I, I mean I explained how these things worked. And there's not much else to it except for this column here. Um, basically, it just keeps alternating up and down. It's just power all the way through, so they alternate on and off, but it, will, it works out to the same thing because there's an even number of them for each layer. Um, oh, I should also tell you guys that whenever you add another digit to the pin, uh, it, you know, it, it would go up in a layer, as I've added too many, but the area is only um it's only six by four by seven. That's all, that's all it takes to add one more um one more digit to the combination. That's actually uh that's 168 blocks and that's actually pretty good because if you were making a conventional um an order sensitive um, combination lock that can do the repeat buttons and everything exactly how you want. If you were to do it that way out of just RS NOR latches, um, and it was really easy to pro reprogram like this, you probably have quite a challenge getting something really compact. Um, so, so, so much for me calling this novelty earlier, though I guess it kind of is, considering all the stuff you have to do, you know, to, and all the people, you have to put the item down the water and everything and go down the ladder. Um, there's one guy on YouTube named Minecraft Addict who has a four button combination lock that is pretty compact though and I thought it was the best one yet um, however for a six button lock using his design the dimensions would be two by six by fourteen for each digit you add so that's also 168 blocks uh, but as it turns out my crazy design would actually be superior to that one if we only used four buttons as I'd have a 4x4x7 four by four by uh, area for each digit, which is 112 blocks, and he'd have 2x6x12, um, by by which is 144. Now, on the other hand, if there were more buttons, his design would be better, although, it, you know, if you look at this, it's really messy at the moment, so it's just, it would just be a bitch to try to put all these buttons so close together, which is how they should be. Um, and they get out of hand. Uh, there's also another really evil feature I showed you, and I really hope you wouldn't um, count it against my size, because it's kind of unnecessary if you have a reasonably sized pin, like maybe five, six, or seven numbers, but 
what I did also was, whenever you press this, um, whenever you step on the plate, it'll push all the wrong levers. You know, it'll push all the levers out. I mean, I mean pistons. So, so the thing is, if it, I know it's kind of unnecessary still, but I just wanted to do it to be extra evil. So that would just, um, that would just mean extra evilness if you were, you know, trying every now and then, you know, just pushing a button and then stepping on the lever to see if it was. And then, I mean, you couldn't just push a button, step on the lever, push a button, step on the lever. That just wouldn't work because they'd be pushing it off early. So you would have to end up pushing a lot, as many buttons or more buttons in the actual combination length just to be sure that you weren't pushing it off when you shouldn't be uh, when you're trying to open the door. Oh, there's also another there's also another crucial point though. You see, if you remember, uh, the would-be intruders would have to be go through all this water and crap and go up and down the ladder, and they have to be throwing items in the hole. And who knows if they have them? And you know that's another minor inconvenience in itself. And that that would effectively uh, make the time it takes between entering combinations like 20 or 50 times longer. Uh, because on a conventional system, you can just sit there and push buttons. And if extra precautions aren't taken, uh, the so-called first button of the next combination you enter would actually be part of a different combination, where uh, that button you just pressed is the last digit. And um, the last digits of the first combination that you thought you entered would actually be the digits before that. Um, so yeah, on the other hand, going up and down the stairs can be quite an inconvenience as well. Um, so your base would have to be down in the ground a bit. And um, yeah, if you entered it wrong, you'd have to go up, but hopefully you wouldn't. Um, you know though, you could have a big base and you could have an exit that's up at the top that you can leave, but you can't go back in. And if that was the case, you could have a little water tunnel like this that I just um, I pre-dug out. So you could only go down it, but then you could never get back up because you'd be drowned by after so long. Um, anyway, that's just your choice. You know, you can go, you can uh, go with all these extra hassles and this funny system where you have to throw items down or just the plain old push the buttons but up to you I kinda I do I'm trying to push, push the point that it's probably about just as compact as any reasonably um, reasonably efficient and reprogrammable uh, combination lock which is a good plus uh, but just as a disclaimer uh, the locks are pretty much just for fun, and unless you're on a server where blocks can't be destroyed, but there aren't any chest or device locks, then it's pretty much useless. Um, yeah, but that's it. I hope you like this.